like a Subaru! It's not often we manage to get the two most requested builds in one camera shot. John's go-kart build started off as an MTD lawn tractor. The transmission has been turned 90 degrees. We've got a centrifugal clutch that we ordered off of Amazon that has a pulley on it. And right now it still has the governor in it. And learning with it, well, it was at that 3,600 RPM. Well, that was fun. But I think it's time that we do a governor delete. And DinoCam came out with the best anti-I-don't-use-brakes, the gas pedal goes to the floor hot rod driver device I've seen in a long time. A coil that has a 5,000 RPM limiter that should just bolt right on after we do a governor delete, and then Mr. Hot Rod here hopefully won't throw the rod through the side of the block. And the reason why that is huge is because machines like this, this is John's John Deere with a centrifugal clutch set up in it. You can see here. And it took hours of monkeying around, a tachometer, all that kind of stuff to get it so that it would sit and not rev to the moon and attempt to blow it to smithereens. If all I have to do is just do a governor delete like we normally do, pop a coil on, I don't have to worry about gas pedal limiters, I don't have to worry about a tachometer, I don't have to spend hours tuning it in. That sounds pretty good in dad life. What does GPS say it does right now? A grand total of five miles per hour. Five? Yep. Awesome. All right. This is the star of the show. Well, John thinks he's the star of the show, and so does most of the subscribers. But DinoCam just came out with a Ducar coil that has a 5,000 RPM limiter on it. So at least that's the theory. We're the first people to go and monkey with this thing on YouTube. So, all right, get it torn apart. No, no, now that you undid the pan, now you have to lift the pan and then you have to get to the two bolts that are hidden between the pan and the frame rail because Dad is a crummy engineer. <laughs> My favorite de-engineering screw-up device, a bit of plasma cutting. Did you really just fart in the background of a video? Seriously. Okay, well anyways, now that we got that cut out, can you reach the two bolts? Okay. Yeah, no more farting in video. We're gonna address the ongoing oil problem with these Duramax engines later. But yeah, if you leave one of these out and it has the stock airbox and the stock muffler on it, that's what happens when it gets rained on. I'm not going to cover the governor delete in this video. Down below in the description I'll post a link to our YouTuber lie governor delete video because you don't have to do all the top plate junk. You don't have to do all the special $30 adapters. All of this works perfectly fine without any of that. So if you need that video, it'll be in the description down below. John's currently having one of those reality of life mechanic moments of cheap part, hours upon hours of disassembly to be able to finally install the cheap part, which is why it is mechanics charge insane amounts per hour. So in order to install that little itty bitty coil, you have to remove the air box, roll that out of the way. You've got to remove the entire side cover assembly, which is now sitting over there. You've got to pull the three bolts out of the gas tank so that you can lift the gas tank and set it off to the side because you need to be able to get to this wire that runs under your governor arm across here and into one of these connections. 
Plus, all of these Hondas and Honda clones run underneath this panel that normally is here, which is now currently over there, in order to come through here, in order to come around to get to your spark plug. And John has done all of it pretty much by himself and is starting to realize why it is that every time that he says, oh, it's only a $5 part that I glare at him. Yeah, hang your head in shame, Mr. Learning. Anyways, so now we've got to pop the two bolts out of this. We got to get the wiring ran with the new coil. And then this is our governor spring delete. So once this is hitched back into that throttle plate, you take a zip tie and you zip tie this, and at that point, everything that moves here is one solid linkage, and you don't have any governor override. Vroom vroom. Yeah, I know, your vroom vroom custom pedals over there. Which, okay, we all had a Fast and the Furious moment. Don't judge me, but that came out of my 89 Ford Pro because I had to have the cool Fast and the Furious gas pedal. And then John proceeded to go and grab the saw and go, Dad, this would be cool as a gas pedal, and slice it all in half. <laughs> Without asking. I did not. I was saving a piece of my childhood. I did not do that. <laughs> What was that? I need spacer. We will get to that. Stop pushing me. Okay, we have to show the people how to set it up first. All right, so here's what we do. We take the coil, we rotate the magnet so it's centered to the coil. We run the plug wire that way. We run the kill wire up and under, making sure to go under the arm. Now what you do is you pull this away and you put a spacer in there. So, John, I'm going to give you the spacer that go-kart people keep telling me is what they use at the track. Oh. Money. Sweet. <laughs> so here's what the go-kart people say. The go-kart people say that money is slippery. Mm -hmm. And normally you put something sacrificial between the two of those because it'll rip it apart. But the go-kart people say if you take two $1 bills mm -hmm. and you stack them, that when you rotate the flywheel, it'll come out from underneath. <laughs> so let's try it. I'm going to sacrifice $2. No, don't fold it over. You have to stack them. I know, you're trying to pocket it. <laughs> Maybe. Yep, so you got to get it in underneath. Now, this is John's first coil, so... We're having learning experiences here. Not going to show you the first clip because it was a fail. Because what we think happened was that when John installed the $2, he put it all the way to the gear and it was pinched. So we set it so it's flush with the coil and we're going to try it again. So John, go ahead and hold on to the top one and rotate the flywheel and see if the bottom one comes out. Did it come out? The bottom one's about to come out. And it didn't rip it up? Yeah. All right. Would you like the $2? Do you think you earned it? Yep. Okay. <laughs> and remember, once you get the throttle plate on, you got to zip tie the rear spring and then cut the tail off. If you forget that, you're going to hate yourself later because otherwise you got to pull the gas tank and flip it sideways to get to it later on. Based on the previous part of this video, we've decided to hire a new engineer. He even came all dressed up in everything. He's within the hiring budget. So from now on, if bolts are in the wrong place and hard to get to, we know who to blame. Plus, as he gets bigger, he'll be the one that's capable of reaching them and I can sit back and watch. Meanwhile, the legs down there are John currently attempting to get the four bolts in after we cut that plate out. Say bye-bye, Mr. Engineer. Before we take John out for a top speed run, I want to put a disclaimer in this. 
This is using a forward neutral reverse transmission out of a lawn tractor. And that means that when John puts it into reverse, it is exactly as fast in reverse as it is in forward. So it's all about gas pedal control. Okay? Okay. So John's got a speedometer right here. We actually put this on the Patreon account for free if you guys want to build one yourself. Hi, right, John. Let's go take it for a run. <laughs> That's definitely faster. What are you getting now? Can you show me in fingers? Eight? Yep. Awesome. All right, let's run the easy course and then we'll run the medium off road. And if you manage to make it through medium off road, we'll hit the mud run. Okay, easy course first. Okay, easy course. Wow, is that a lot faster. That is a ton faster. Do you want to try the off-road? Yep. All right, let me go get in position. <laughs> What'd you do, scare yourself? Yeah, it's fun. Okay, go for it. when I stepped right into it. All right, you got to back it up. See if it'll make it out. <laughs> no, I think you're stuck. Okay, stop, stop, sit up. You're high centered on something. Give me a second. That root came up exactly underneath that bar right there. Now back it up, and once you get on the hill, put the brake on, then shift it forward. I know it's an open diff, but you should see if you can rip a donut where it's clay and it's wet.
and he's gonna rip up my rocks. Nope. <laughs> hey, I'm proud of you. You knew when to bail out. That's good. You knew when to bail and to hit the brake, right? All right, so thank everybody for sponsoring this video because Patreon paid for that coil. Thank you. Can you give him a big thumbs up and a bye-bye? Bye-bye. Thank you. Did you notice that? The longer you stayed on that rev limiter, the slower it got because it's washing gas in the cylinder. You have to learn to keep the throttle just below the rev limiter or else it's flooding out. You got learning to do. Love you, Butterball.